Welcome back to the channel and today we're taking a look at the Jack Wolf After Hours Jack. This is the second locking folder from Jack Wolf Knives and boy is it a good one. These hit dealers on December 15th, 2023 at 11 a.m. Pacific Time or 2 p.m. Eastern Time. They come in five different variations. The one you see here with the frost fat carbon. I think it's absolutely stunning. Blue's my favorite color. It's got a blue, white, little bit of black in it. And there are five different variations and they all look absolutely stunning. I think this could possibly be my favorite Jack Wolf knife so far and I think it's mainly because I love the blade shape. It's more suited to the type of things I do and I absolutely love the size of this one. It's coming in at 7.31 inches long with a 3.17 inch blade in CPM S90V steel which is an outstanding choice for this platform. It's going to hold a edge for a really long time. It can take a nice aggressive toothy edge. You got a beautiful utility blade shape here. You got a razor blade thin tip there. Great for doing drag cuts through things or if you need to trace out something very fine and precise. It's going to do it really, really well. You got a nice top swedge that helps thin out that tip some. You got a beautiful vertical belt satin finish there. Nice and even. You got two long dual fullers or you could call them long pulls, whatever you want to call them. You have a perfectly executed sharpening toil that should give you tons of sharpening life before it starts to widen in the back right here. You have some nice grippy jimping that gives you a good bit of traction. If you want, you could also choke up on that blade because you got this nice flat spot if you want to get right up on that edge so you can, can really control your cut. You have a beautiful full height hollow grind that comes down to around 15 thousandths behind the edge. That coupled with a 21 degrees per side edge bevel, this thing should perform outstanding. Let's find out. My particular knife came with a decent edge out of box. It's not the best in the world, but that's something I can easily fix. And that happens from time to time. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but uh, it's performing okay. That's, that's all I can say right now. And it's not common for the Jack Wolf knives at least. Uh, so I just got one that wasn't super, super sharp. But now we're going to test the ergos on this piece of pine, kind of seeing what that edge is like. I'm able to get the fine curl, so it has, it. like I said, a reasonable edge on it. It just doesn't have a ton of bite to it, um, or at least it doesn't feel like it. We'll, we'll definitely find out later in the testing. The handle's pretty darn comfortable. You got contoured scales. Nothing was poking or prodding me. The clip stayed out of the way of my palm, and the way that handle flares out in the back, it felt pretty nice. Didn't feel like it was wanting to spin in the hand or anything. You wouldn't probably want to do this for a long, long period of time because... You know, you got thinner scales. It will start to fatigue your wrists and your forearms. But I'm able to get a lot of force into the wood because of that basically straight edge it has. And it's uh, pretty darn comfortable while doing so. This is where it's going to shine, doing drag cuts like that. Um, you got that scalpel-like tip. And you can do some things on a flat cutting surface. Your, your blade is canted down, which kind of helps out a little bit. But as you can see toward the end of that cut, I'm having to pull it through. And that's just common with a, a straight edge knife. Um, I, I get through some of this and now you can see me. It's not that I'm struggling. It's just that I don't want to slam that tip into the cutting board. Uh, you know, you could definitely snap it if you did something like that. And you just got to be smart when you're cutting stuff. But I tried to do the denim on the flat surface but you'll see me in a second i have to raise it up on a block just because i'm not getting enough contact area to uh cut the material and it makes it look like it's struggling but it's doing pretty darn good uh it like i said i can feel here it doesn't have a ton of bite to it but of course after this uh review i will be sharpening it up and man oh man they perform so much better after the first sharpening or two now we're at the half inch twisted sisal rope. I went straight to the block on this one. I always do if it's a straight edge. It just, if not, it just tears up my hands. My hands are already beat up enough. I don't need to have any extra calluses or, uh, or blisters on my hands that I already have. So it's doing okay. You can see it kind of skate off the sisal rope every now and again. And that just goes back to not having as much bite as it usually does. And S90V takes a very aggressive edge that's one thing i love about his choice here it holds an edge really really long and it takes such an incredibly toothy edge if you wanted to i usually 
sharpen mine to about 600 grit then strop it and man it <laughs> It's especially these knives that have these very thin, thin hollow grinds, they perform so, so well. So, yeah, definitely do yourself a favor. Don't be scared to sharpen up your knives. And uh, especially if you know what you're doing, give this a sharpening or two. You don't have to take off too much material. Just either follow the factory, factory bevel at 21 degrees, at least that's what mine is, or put your own. I'll probably drop mine to about 18 thousandths, I mean, 18 degrees per side. I find it. Uh, to be an excellent combination with this thin hollow grind. We get through 80 cuts and that's not too shabby for the edge it had. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action of the knife. You have a front flipper that works really, really well because this jimping is nice and grippy. You can do the traditional flip or you can come around the top, do the top flip. Or you have these dual fullers on both sides. You can use those to reverse flick if you like. You can use those to thumb flick. You can use them to slow roll it. Or if you'd like to pinch it out, you could do that as well. The action on mine is buttery smooth. I can shake it shut. And he's also offering some skiff bearings uh, to replace the ones that come on it. Both of them are ceramic bearings. Skiff bearings are just a little bit more stable because they have a, a race washer on both sides, giving it a little bit extra side to side rigidity. But the action on mine stood out right away. Uh, it's better than the sharpshooter, the first locking folder that they released, at least for mine. Mine has got a good bit of lock bar tension on this one, so it's not a shake shut like this particular one is. Now to the handle area, we have nice and contoured scales, very nicely done. You have a dark blasted titanium long bolster here with three flutes on it on both sides. You have a Torx T10 for the pivot, which is polished titanium, so if you want to anodize it, give it a little pop of color, you could, along with the cover screws as well. The cover screws are Torx T8 and they're very, very tight fitment. Very nice. Your transition between the carbon fiber and the titanium is seamless. Only thing I feel are the flutes right here. Nicely done. Everything is nice and flush. No gaps anywhere. You have a full length titanium backspacer. On my particular one, it's anodized blue to go with the pocket clip and the carbon fiber. And he gives it that full length to give it that slip joint look. You have that coffin shaped handle. I like that a lot, giving it some nice facets. You have a mill titanium pocket clip that's blind screwed, just meaning it's screwed from the inside so you don't have a clip screw and it functions nicely. Got good tension to it, which you want, being that you're on top of smooth carbon fiber. And if you don't want to use a pocket clip, it also comes with a little filler tab to cover up that spot and you can go clipless. We have a bolster lock, meaning the bolster is the locking mechanism. One cool thing about that is, is that these carbon fiber scales are going to act as an over travel so you don't overextend your titanium lock bar. There's no internal milling because you have all this titanium that's milled out for the carbon fiber. You do have that full length titanium backspacer so I don't know how much that's going to affect the weight. Yep, it's a featherweight at 2.737 ounces and that has a lot to do with its thin and sleek nature. Here's your balance point, which is kind of expected. The lockup on mine, I'd say, is around 50% or so. And I have no movement up or down, left or right. Very tight lockup. Now, of course, I could flex this blade because of how thinly grounded it is, but no movement at least. The access to the lock bar is good for me. It is flush with the show side scale. However, you do have a little chamfer on both sides. I can get my thumb in there rather easily, no problem. Now, if you had fat sausage fingers, maybe it might be a problem. I don't know, uh, but I can only speak for myself. You also have the hardened stainless lock insert to prevent titanium on hardened steel. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have two Jack Wolf knives. We have the Feel Good Jack and the Midnight Jack. The After Hours Jack is a locking version of the Midnight Jack, but it's a good bit longer, which is something you have to do pretty much to make it work as a locking folder. Next, we have the traditional pocket knives, Lake Champlain Barlow, which is a little bit longer, and the Jack Wolf, uh, I want to say Gunslinger Jack, I always mess this one up, is a hair longer. And last, we have the Spyderco Para 3 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Nitpicks and complaints, I only really have two, and they're basically just nitpicks. Of course, I would have liked the, the edge to come sharper out of the box, but 
You know, it happens from time to time. I'm sure most people's are going to be ridiculously sharp. Mine just I didn't have the bite I usually like, for my testing at least. And this jimping right here, it, it does its job really well. It's nice and grippy. I prefer this fine jimping like on this uh, Pena X series knife. That fine jimping grabs, grabs the finger just as good as that, but it's a lot more comfortable in uh, different manners. You know, whenever I flip this, my hands are beat up, so it's a little uncomfortable for me to use. But for the average person, I'm sure it's going to be just fine. But other than that, my final thoughts, you know, if you're okay with, you know, the premium price tag because it is a premium knife with premium materials that's built very, very well. This is my favorite Jack Wolf model so far. And yeah, these are going to sell out rather, rather quickly. So if you want one of these, be ready because uh, once they drop, I'm sure, you know, certain mod certain versions of this will sell out almost immediately. And I'm sure these won't last all that long since this is only their second locking folder. Last The last one, these sold out rather quickly and they were going for a hefty sum on the secondary market. So be ready. I hope if you want one of these, hopefully you can get your hands on one. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.